NBA free agency has uh, kept me up all night. Um, insanity, for the most part, because Paul George is on the Thunder. And that's awesome for Russell Westbrook. And also, really concerning for Danny Ainge. Because, hmm, Royce Young said yesterday, June 30th, 2017, right about 7 p.m., it's Paul George for DeMontis Sabonis and Victor Oladipo. Now, what I don't get is what, why the Pacers turned down the reported, like, two or three picks and Jay Crowder on draft night for Paul George. That one, I need to look up far more information. What did the Pacers want to part with uh, on draft night that they decided to settle for Sabonis and Victor Oladipo? Now, one of the takeaways from this has been that uh, uh, Presti, who's a magician when it comes to being a GM at times, like this move. And I didn't think the Thunder were really on Paul George's radar, but good GMs make moves like this to make their team more competitive and better. And I get it. Look, it, the biggest takeaway has been, so what? Paul George is on the, the Thunder. He's not Kevin Durant. They're not better than they were when they had Kevin Durant. Of course not. But they're better than they were last year. Like, you watch them against the Rockets, and not a single person could hit a shot. Granted, Robertson, Roberson uh, is a very good defender, All-NBA was he second team defender, and I thought that you know that should have gone to a Jimmy Butler or a Clay Thompson. But needless to say, he's still up there amongst guys who can guard the wing very, very well. But you're putting somebody who can score uh, and will turn in some some big offensive games when it matters and take some of the gravity off of Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook's usage percentage is still going to be through the roof. It's still going to be his basketball. It's still his team. But at least for a year rental the Thunder can compete more so than they did last year. So let's take a look at this. For one, it takes one of the best Eastern Conference players out of the Eastern Conference. So, of course, there's the LeBron cakewalk into the finals again, most likely the scenario. Um, and, you know, Joel Embiid hilariously tweets out, uh, that's one less, you know, playoff contender or a team to probably make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. He <laughs> he, trust the process. So, and speaking of, they signed J.J. Redick. So let's, again, start with the Paul George trade, because I think that, uh, although it's not necessarily free agency related, it's trade related, it's still the biggest move that happened yesterday. Um, aside from, we'll get to it, Curry's contract, LeBron criticizing, not criticizing, but going out and saying he should get him paid twice the amount. There's a lot of good stuff, but I'm going to try to keep it to a, I don't know, 10-minute video if that. Paul George on the Thunder uh, makes them, like I said, more competitive in a Western Conference that just got extremely competitive. Who's the favorite? The Warriors, obviously. But if the Warriors have to run into in the second and then the Western, the second round of the Western Conference Finals, uh, a really good, I would say, Rockets team if this works out with Chris Paul and James Harden, that can really put the pressure on you offensively. Um, or a Timberwolves team that has now a lineup boasting uh, Jeff Teague, Andrew Wiggins. Jimmy Butler and Carl Anthony Towns. Carl Anthony Towns about to enter like that that I think the next step season when he's already had an unbelievable second half to the end of last year with Thibodeau who turned Jimmy Butler, I would say. He really was part of the reason he developed in such a, a, a great defensive presence, one of the best two-way players in the league now. So the Warriors aren't getting out of the playoffs easily anymore. I would say in this uh, this year's circumstances, when Kawhi went down, the Spurs were the big challenge. And, of course, we can't forget the San Antonio Spurs ever. So next year, not to get too far ahead of it, but let's say everybody's healthy, which has never happened in NBA history, but let's say everybody's healthy heading into the playoffs. You're looking at way more competitive series from the West. And I would still think the Warriors get out of it and get to the finals because they're going to get better. Curry and Durant are coming back as the best duo in the NBA, uh, and they have clicked. And so, I mean, the same thing that happened with LeBron, Wade, Bosch, and when they figured everything out in that second year, they torched the league in 2012 and then in 2013. So I think that the Warriors are still going to come out strong. However, it's just not going to be as easy. And a series, sure, against Westbrook and George is not a cakewalk. Uh, and, of course, I mean, I really think that Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum should just, I, 
I, I know how loyal they are to the Blazers. Go to the Eastern Conference, guys. Go to the Eastern Conference and dominate. Um, so, addition to that, uh, or additionally, I should say, uh, here's a chart of the free agency deals that have happened so far. The biggest was, I guess, technically Steph Curry's five-year, $201 million contract. LeBron quote tweeted uh, somebody on Twitter who was saying that uh, Joe Lacob bought the Warriors for $450 million, and now they're worth $2 billion. And his point was that means Curry should be making $400 million, not $200 million. His point is sound, and I have always have said this, do not get mad at the player. Like, yes, Drew Holiday, five years, $153 million. Is he a $153 million player? No, not necessarily. But should we be mad at Drew Holiday? No, man, go make your money. Same as Mike Conley last year. Uh, some other really interesting deals. The one-year deal for J.J. Redick and the process now in Philly. So you got Fultz, Redick, uh, who I'm missing, Sarich, Sarich, I can never pronounce it right, I'm sorry, Joel Embiid, and Ben Simmons. And health, obviously, the biggest concern for that team. But that starting five should be extremely fun to watch. And uh, in the Eastern Conference, where it's not nearly as competitive as the Western Conference, uh, I think the Philadelphia 76ers are headed to the playoffs next year. And you want to talk about trust in the process. That worked out quite great. Uh, Blake Griffin signs a five-year, $173 million deal for the Clippers. I understand why the Clippers did this. I just don't think... I, they're reshaping the team. I think they should have gone full rebuild once Chris Paul left. I also thought that Jerry West should really consider letting Doc Rivers go. It's not like there's a lot of great coaches in the NBA, and it's not like uh, uh, Doc Rivers is the most secure coach to have. It seems like there's some problems in that environment with the Clippers, and you know, reshaping around Blake Griffin isn't the same as I would say letting him go and rebuilding completely, uh, especially given the landscape of the Western Conference right now. It wouldn't have been a bad move for them to rebuild. Having said that, objectively, you get Blake playing the point forward. He gets to create more and be more of a, I guess, even a distributor in this case. Uh, and he should be looking at probably a career year in terms of numbers without Chris Paul there. It's obviously his usage is going to go way up, especially in a passing role. Patty Mills signs a four-year, $50 million deal with the San Antonio Spurs. I've always had a soft spot for Patty Mills. I like Patty Mills. Uh, Patty Mills, I always thought that uh, he was overdue for like a great Spurs playoff series, and I thought it would happen like either uh, last year or two years ago. Maybe it's still coming. Again, $50 million over four years. It's a lot of money for a guy like Patty Mills. But once again, that's what it costs to keep these players. The same as Drew Holiday. It costs a lot of money to keep these guys. Uh, and at least with the Druth down in in New Orleans, you still got uh, a full season coming in with Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins. Should be an interesting team. Big gamble there, but we'll see what will happen. Uh, the Knicks re-signed uh, Ron Baker, who was an undrafted guy out of Wichita State. So good for Ron Baker. David West re-signs with the Warriors. That's a big one. Andre Guadala, I'm not sure by the time this, this clip goes up. I think that it's possibly going to be that he re-signs with the Warriors, but I don't know. Uh, maybe the Rockets. I think he's going to cost a lot of money. But his veteran presence, as everyone should know at this point, is uh, you can't really replace someone like Iguodala. He gives you a lot, a lot, just in terms of locker room um, and defensively and just an off-the-bench role that he's kind of mastered at this point in his career. Who else? Sean Livingston. Sean Livingston's knee exploded. Sean's living, Sean Livingston had the most graphically troubling injury I've ever seen, aside from Louisville's player who's, you know, the bone... Ugh. You know, sorry to bring that up. Um, so good for Sean Livingston, man. Three years, $24 million for a guy whose leg exploded. Happy for you, Sean Livingston. And somebody that the Warriors really need to keep on to because uh, a hold on to. And they're going to wait. Durant's going to take a pay cut, I think. Um, he's waiting to re-sign because I think he's, uh, he wants to continue to play with the Golden State Warriors and win championships. So I think he's going to take a little bit of a pay cut. Uh, either way, these guys are making so much money. Some other smaller moves, Langston Galloway signs with the Detroit uh, Pistons for three years, $21 million, and uh, uh, the ball, uh, Jeff Teague to the Minnesota Timberwolves. So there's still some really, really big names out there. Um, Kyle Lowry is still available. Gordon Hayward, I guess, had a good meeting with the Heat. Maybe they're more interested in signing him, and maybe they can lure him down with Hassan Whiteside and Goran Dracic and what Eric Spolstra turned around to what I thought was the Coach of the Year performance, especially after such a really, really bad start to last season. And missing the playoffs by, what, half a game, I think. Um, so Hayward to the Heat, 
definitely uh, a good call too, just not as uh, close to getting to, I would think, uh, an NBA Finals considering the Eastern, uh, considering the Eastern Conference, LeBron James and the Boston Celtics still on paper having, I would think, the, one of the best teams in the East. Uh, the Wizards are another interesting spot that I'm curious what moves they're going to try to make, maybe either through trades or just a way to bolster their lineup with John Wall and Bradley Beal. With Paul George out of the question, John Wall is the second best player in the Eastern Conference. I think it's a pretty pretty large, eh, not large gap, but it's a gap. Giannis is up there too, but don't get me wrong, man. John Wall has proven a lot of stuff in last year's playoffs, uh, especially uh, in terms of not just being the fast guy in the league. He's really elevated his game to an entirely new level, and I love seeing it from John Wall. So that's like the update on free agency. I want to go into more detail. I need more time. <laughs> um, so much happened at 7 p.m. yesterday. My head spun. I was freaking out over Danny Ainge because I don't understand why Danny Ainge would not part ways with whatever it was that the Pacers wanted uh, to get Paul George in there. Because I do think a lineup of Isaiah Thomas, Avery Bradley, Paul George, whatever, Jay Crowder, flip them, if Paul George has to play the four, and Al Horford uh, is more competitive with the Cavs. And like I said, you never know with injuries. You never know. So who knows? You go into next year's playoffs and maybe the Cavs are missing somebody. And they're more vulnerable than they were in the past years. We know their defense is suspect, so they got to make uh, changes to that. Same goes for the Western Conference. We, Kevin Durant's been oft injured. Chris Paul's been oft injured at times. So it's, it's not like next year we're looking at a guaranteed Cavs-Warriors final. I would think this year coming into it, it was very obvious. Cavs-Warriors, it wasn't like there was too many other strong teams aside from the Spurs. Uh, this year, just all these moves. I love them. I love it. This offseason's been insane. I'm really excited for Summer League. We're going to be doing that. And uh, that, that's it. I mean, I want to go into more detail, and I'll probably try to put some a bigger package together of what the hell has happened over the last couple of uh, days, or at least a couple of hours, uh, for YouTube and Facebook and all the good stuff. So uh, comment below. You can follow me on Twitter at Jason1, Instagram, all the good stuff. Happy Fourth of July weekend.